the sun magnetic field. We consider the sun as a giant fluid ball with material moving inside it, creating an electric current. The electric current, in turn, generates a magnetic field that produces the activities we see at its surface. The magnetic field lines become then visible as they guide the so-called plasma. A variety of plasma structure delineate the magnetic field lines of the sun. We also think that the solar wind, composed of charged particles, carries the sun magnetic field through the solar system. We consider the sun magnetic field, or the interplanetary magnetic field, the IMF, as a separate phenomenon to the sun wind, prominences, polar plums, helmet streamers, spickles, etc. But all these phenomena are actually features of the same structure. We see only the exterior of the sun, but if we could travel inside the sun, we would see that the sun is made of empty cavities with a density chamber at its center. The interior of the sun is made of electric and magnetic flux tubes. These loops are the building blocks of the sun. They also connect the sun to stars and planets. The sun, like planets and moons, is hollow. The sun is not dipolar magnet, as we think. Flux tubes propagate into space asymptotic to the mid plane. Also, prominences and coronal loops do not cross the mid plane as you would expect from a dipolar magnet. Early in my research, I was thinking that cyclones of both hemispheres are connected. But when I was studying the sun, I found out that few magnetic field lines cross the mid plane. Also, prominences and coronal loops do not cross the mid plane as you would expect from a dipolar magnet. It's only when I found these fractal models that things became clear. The sun magnetic flip. Every 11 years, the sun magnetic field is reversed. But actually, the electric field should also reverse. During the electric and magnetic flip, the flow direction in the flux tubes is reversed. The flow direction of a prominence is also reversed. This means that the sunspot's magnetic field at the feet of the prominences reverse polarity from cycle to cycle. During the electromagnetic flip, the sun activity slows down to a minimum before the flux of every tube starts to flow in the opposite direction. Plasma. The contemporary understanding of plasma is that it's some kind of soup of negative charged particles like electrons and positive charged particles like ions. Ions are atoms that have lost their electrons. It is sometimes referred to as the fourth state of matter. It is even thought that 99% of the universe is made of plasma. With the arrival of fractals, plasma has finally revealed its true nature. Plasma is not soup of charged particles and ions, but rather flux tubes that cross each other or are squeezed against each other. Inside the cavities and in the dead zones, Electric flux tubes and magnetic flux tubes are squeezed against each other, creating plasma. Plasma can have different shapes. There are three types of plasma. Electric, magnetic, and electro electromagnetic plasma. Electric plasma also exists in cellular form, like on the top of clouds. These are called pixies. Magnetic plasma can have spiral shapes. Polar plums and polar rays. 
Polar plumps are huge magnetic flux tubes that extend radially from the sun's surface into space. They have different sizes. They start big and thick at certain distance from the pole and are gradually thinner poleward. The structure and origin of the southern and northern polar plumps differ from each other. Let's describe the southern polar plumps. The big magnetic polar plumps are known as beam plumps. In between, electric and magnetic flux tubes at smaller scale are propelled from the cloud layers. These regions in between are known in solar physics as the interplumb regions. These smaller magnetic interplumbs are called network plumbs. The electric flux tubes are called the polar rays. These polar rays are more curved than the beam plumbs. This difference in curvature slash inclination cause polar plumbs and polar rays to cross each other with slight angle creating electri electromagnetic plasma. Polar plumbs are magnetic flux tubes whereas polar rays are electric flux tubes. Polar rays are hotter than polar plumbs as they are electric. Polar plumbs and polar rays alternate while propagating into space. Polar plumbs are much bigger than polar rays. South Pole polar plumbs have their origin, so to speak, in the magnetic belt of the southern hemisphere, whereas polar rays originate from the cloud layers. Both polar plumbs and polar rays cross each other, creating plasma. Despite the numerous observations techniques, the structures and nature of the interplum regions is not well understood. Using these models, we can understand these inter-regions. The magnetic flux tubes, also originating from the atmospheric clouds, curvature is less than the one of the polar rays. They too cross the polar plumbs, creating magnetic plasma. Tangled together at the base in a grid form, polar plumbs form the southern magnetic belt. This belt can be considered as the magnetic backbone of the southern hemisphere of the celestial body. The magnetic belt resides in the inner atmosphere of the celestial body. Magnetic flux tubes coming from space in a sheet formation penetrate the, elect the celestial body, makes a U-turn while crossing each other, creating a magnetic grid and the magnetic plasma belt. After making a U-turn, they then intersect with the electric flux tubes and form the celestial body layers. Polar plumbs cross the dead zone cavities at the surface of the sun, creating this bright magnetic plasma. Plumbs cross also density cavities, giving them brightness. Observations of polar plumbs shows indeed bright areas at the foot point of polar plumbs. Polar plumbs having a slight opposite inclination to the ra radial cross each other, creating magnetic plasma. The interplumbs, as much electric as magnetic, originate from the cloud layers. Solar wind and coronal holes. Coronal holes are these dark regions on the sun's surface. These regions produce the most high speed solar wind. The solar wind speed is twice as high as elsewhere. Solar wind are electric and magnetic flux tubes that are not alternate. When electric and magnetic flux tubes propagate, collimate, but not alternate into space, they produce the solar wind. Their speed can vary depending on their scale and the interac interaction between them. These flux tubes does not produce radiation. That's why coronal holes are dark. Coronal holes produce the most solar wind and are cooler and darker than other regions. 
Coronal holes are populated by open magnetic flux tubes because these lines do not plunge into those holes to create radiation. So there are no arcs to be seen that comes out of the cavities plunging into the punch holes. Coronal holes exist permanently at the poles of the sun, but they also exist at lower latitudes. Coronal holes are these areas with, with few density cavities and sunspots. In the fractal model, both poles have few punch holes and cavities. Hence, they produce less radiation than the mid-latitudes. Dead zones, neutral sheet and current sheet. Dead zones exist at different latitudes. They are extended beams that alternate with flux tubes beams. Dead zones are an extension of dead zone cavities inside the celestial body. Dead zone beams are geostationary spreading out radially from the celestial body. They have different sizes. The closer you get to the poles, the thinner they are, with the equatorial dead zone as the thickest one. The flux tubes coming out of the sun are not spread out uniform. Dead zones alternate with flux tubes beams forming these dark beams in between. The equatorial dead zone lies under the electric and magnetic sheets. The current sheet is a huge electric flux tube that cross the north-south axis of the sun. The current sheets and the magnetic sheets are propagated into space asymptotic to the equatorial dead zones. Inside the dead zone, the electric and magnetic flux tubes form plasma. Dead zone is not created by dust shield as generally thought. Dead zones are probably connections between celestial bodies. In the case of binary stars, a dead zone split both stars at the equatorial plane. Neutral sheet is the medium where flux tubes can exist. Flux, flux tubes are roped inside the neutral sheet. In the dead zone, there are no flux tubes. Dead zone is field-free zone. When a flux tube has to cross a dead zone, they do that as plasma roped inside the neutral sheet. Inside a cavity, flux tubes are roped in the neutral sheet. The neutral sheet can be considered as the ether. Ether is the medium that transports flux tubes. Ether varies and adapts itself to the dead zones. Light bridges. Not to confuse with rainbow clouds. Light bridges has been observed in sunspots. They are electric or magnetic flux tubes loops that attach a sunspot to a density cavity interlocking them together. A punch hole and a density cavity can be interlocked by an electric or a magnetic flux loop or both in the same time. The flux loop cross the punch hole at its center. In the case of, case of punch holes clouds, they produce rainbow colors. Not to confuse with rainbow clouds, where punch holes themselves produce colors by assembling electric and magnetic flux tubes. Not all punch holes and density cavities and in, are interlocked by light bridges. Light bridges can have a perfect ring shape. Pixies and ball lightning. Pixies are brief dots of light above thunderstorms. A pixie is an electric plasma cell. Electric flux tubes cross each other forming a plasma cell. In the fractal model, we find plasma cells at the top of prominences density cavities. Each plasma cell is confined inside a chain of density cavities that are surrounded by punch holes. 
pixies are probably the same phenomenon as ball lightning. Ball lightning is a bright white blob floating in the, in the air. They appear during thunderstorms and can burn objects and injure people. They have different sizes. They are continuously connecting and reconnecting with their surrounding. Pixies has also been observed at the top of the sun prominences and are thought to be free electrons. Sunspot bridges and punch hole bridges. Again, not to confuse with sunspot light bridges. Sunspots located in a dead zone play different role. They serve as bridge for flux tubes to cross the dead zone. Electric and magnetic flux tubes do not plunge into the sunspots, but rather cross it at the center like they do in a density cavity. Two bundles of electric and magnetic flux tubes, not always alternate, cross at the center of the punch hole. It looks similar to what bundles does inside the density cavity, except that in this case, both bundles are a mixture of electric and magnetic flux tubes in a random distribution. The punch holes has still the shape of a hole, but it is used by the flux tubes as a bridge to cross the dead zone. These punch holes do not produce radiation, nor they split it. When crossing the dead zone via a sunspot bridge, flux tubes are squeezed against each other, creating plasma. At the center of the punch hole, the crossing angle is 90 degrees. Prominences, coronal mass ejections, and flares. A prominence is large arc extending outwards from the sun's surface. They are much cooler than their surrounding. They are also called solar filaments. When viewed against the sun's surface, they appear as dark filaments. When viewed at the edge of the sun, they appear brighter. Prominences are anchored to the sun's surface in or near sunspots. Their lifetime varies from hours to months. They can erupt in what is known as coronal mass ejection. At the top of a prominence is a structure called prominence density cavity. Until now, prominences remained a mystery. Based on the fractal models, we are going to describe prominences. A prominence is a huge magnetic flux tube. In this model, we, we see two prominences on both sides of the north-south axis. Let's suppose this is a model of our sun. The prominence is anchored attached to the sun with a pair of sunspots and three density cavities. The mid cavity is hanging in the sun's atmosphere. The other two cavities are inside the sun. The two sunspots in this model are at different sun layers, one in the sun's atmosphere and the second one is buried deep into the sun. The prominence magnetic flow direction determines the polarity of both sunspots. The first sunspot a prominence flux tube cross it is a north pole sunspot. The second is a south pole sunspot. When the flow change direction as it does during sun magnetic flip, the polarity of these two sunspots is reversed. Starting from high latitude, the prominence enter the sun's cavities first and then pass through the sunspot to emerge to the surface of the sun. It then loops back in an arc form to the surface and enter the second cavity which is suspended in the atmosphere. Before it enters the cavity, 
it is joined by other magnetic tubes coming from under. On the sun, this cavity is called the coronal cavity or prominence density cavity. Electric and magnetic plasma inside this cavity is suspended in the atmosphere. Coming out of the other side of the cavity, the prominence magnetic flux tube plunges again into the sun to cross the second sunspot. The visible arc in the sun's atmosphere is what we call a prominence. But the magnetic flux tube loop is more than that. Under the surface, it will again form an arc and loop back, passing a third cavity buried inside the sun. After that, it propagates into space above and asymptotic to the equatorial dead zone. The magnetic flux tubes will then merge with what is known as the heliospheric current sheet. Sometimes we are able to see this propagation as matter flows in and out of the sun on both sides of the prominence arc. It looks like that the sun is pulling the matter back from the corona. At the other end, the matter seems bursting out of the sun's surface. They both form an angle with the sun's surface. This matter movement on both sides of the prominence has never been associated with prominences as far as I know. When a prominence flux tubes cross the sunspot, it twists creating a crossing point at the center of the sunspot. A prominence can release the mid plane segment of the magnetic arc together with the electric flux tube and the density cavity into space. This is what is known as the coronal mass ejection. The electric flux tubes crossing the magnetic prominence flux tubes inside the cavity also detach from the sun. When released, the electric and magnetic flux tubes forms two loops that cross each other at the center of the released density cavity. The total three part structure propagate into space in crescent shape. The bigger the electric and magnetic flux tubes, the bigger the cavity. When the prominence density cavity is snatched loose, a new cavity is formed. This is what we call a flare. A flare is newborn prominence density cavity. This density cavity replaces the one that just broke loose and propagates into space. When generated, this new cavity is so energized it shows a double satire. These satires are actually small density cavities all connected to each other. The double satires consist of series of bright blue lights. A deep zoom into these satires shows that they consist of double line populated by density cavities. Flux tubes coming from space cross these density cavities. The flux tubes are all parallel to each other and perpendicular to the satire lines. These flux tubes make U-turn while crossing the density cavities. These satires produce radiation across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Prominences are cooler than their surroundings because they are magnetic flux tubes only. Prominences have different sizes. The biggest prominence ever observed had the size of the sun radius. Prominences has been observed between 25 and 50 degrees and 60 and 70 degrees latitude. The latest are called polar crown prominences. In the celestial body fractal model, we found prominences at these latitudes.